Imagine yourself in the future, let's say the year 2050. A future where biodiversity is valued and conserved, where it provides us with food, health, clean air and water. Biodiversity is the variety of life on Earth, including plants, animals and microorganisms. This future is the outcome of a vision, agreed upon among countries, to stop the decline in biodiversity. Several decades ago, things looked differently. Since the Industrial Revolution, biodiversity had been declining. In 2015, we realized that in the last 40 years, 4.6 million square kilometers of natural area was converted. This equals the size of Europe. This was caused by us. Crops and livestock replaced many nature areas and even one-third of all food produced was being wasted. 90% of oceans were fully or overexploited. We were building more roads and clearing large areas of forest for timber and paper. If continued, this would have led to another 10% of biodiversity loss globally by 2050. Mostly in areas that still had a large number of species. Aggregated, this effect would be similar to cutting down a pristine forest the size of China. It would have had major consequences for us humans. Loss of nature areas would have aggravated climate change. It would have caused more floods and droughts. Lack of diversity would have made crops more vulnerable to pests and diseases. So what did we do to change course? We stepped up our sustainability initiatives. Protected areas were expanded and more effectively managed. There were large-scale changes across governments and societies. For example, production standards improved. Technology enabled us to grow more food on less land. We reduced our meat and dairy consumption, using less land to feed animals. And we reduced our food waste. These changes help to halt the decline in biodiversity. Imagine yourself in the year 2050. Biodiversity is valued and conserved. Our future is not fixed. In the next 35 years, we'll have to produce more food than all of the world's production combined over the last 2000. So what will the farms of the future look like? Well, they're unlikely to look like this just yet, but many of the sci-fi looking elements are already on the way. Take automation. These concept robots are being designed to autonomously scout, sense and treat invasive pests and pathogens with micro amounts of herbicide or pesticide, vastly reducing the cost and environmental impacts associated with these chemicals. This is known as precision farming and see here how the lasers on this tractor can detect the presence of weed to only treat affected areas. And this is the Ladybird Rover, a working solar-powered prototype that conducts autonomous farm surveillance, mapping and weed detection. Drones are also tipped to play a big role in the farms of the future, like this octocopter at Rothamsted Research. This BBSRC-funded demonstrator technology could help the farmers of the future measure growth and biomass and detect stresses to crops from pathogens or lacks of nutrients or water. Other researchers are already using them for surveillance, sowing seeds and even to find or herd farm animals as you can see here. Vehicles like these utilise the latest advanced sensors and the farms of the future will be packed with them. Multi and hyperspectral cameras for example can see problems that the human eye just can't and want 24 hours a day, feeding data back to shared cloud services for analysis and action. And it doesn't have to cost a fortune. Even now, a lot of this data can be gathered, calculated or uploaded by smartphone upgrades and apps, meaning the benefits can be cost-effective and realized quickly in developing countries too. Tomorrow's global farms will therefore be key users of the Internet of Things, whereby vehicles and equipment can use GPS and Wi-Fi to talk to each other, connect with weather and pest forecasts. As for the farms themselves, the future farms might not all be on the ground, but under it instead, or integrated with factories, businesses, 
and harnessing local energies and opportunities. The farms of the future will also make use of data from large-scale experiments, such as the BBSRC-funded Northwick Farm Platform and the Scanalyzer. Then there is the National Plant Phenomics Centre, also funded by BBSRC. To feed the planet in an increasingly globalised food system and in the face of climate change and extreme weather, we'll need elements of all this amazing technology and more. BBSRC funded researchers are working with partners and collaborators across the world to realise this vision. The future of education can't be found in a gadget or an app or a program or a product. It doesn't require a think tank full of pundits. No, the future of education can be found in your classroom. Your classroom is packed with creative potential. You have all the innovation you need right there in your room. And you have the power to make it happen. It's what happens when you experiment. It's what happens when you give your students voice and choice. It's what happens when you abandon the scripted curriculum and take your students off road in their learning. It's what happens when you teach to your students rather than teaching to the test. It's what happens when you unleash the creative power of all of your students. When you make the bold decision to let them make things and design things and solve problems that they find relevant. Sometimes it's messy and even confusing. It often looks humble. But understand this, that every time your students get the chance to be authors or filmmakers or scientists or artists or engineers, you are planting the seeds for a future that you could never have imagined on your own. That's the power of innovative teachers. That is why the future of education is you. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, I encourage you to subscribe and to like it and to leave a comment about something innovative and creative and amazing that you're seeing in your school or in your classroom or in your child's classroom.